Hello and welcome to another episode of the How to CEO Show. I'm your host, Murray Newlands. I am delighted to be joined by Eric today, who's going to talk about his DeFi product project. Do uh, do introduce yourself and your project. Sure, I'm Eric Martindale, uh, CEO of PortalDeFi.com. Uh, we're building an actually decentralized exchange on top of Bitcoin. Uh, a lot of people don't realize just how powerful Bitcoin smart contracting capabilities are. So we're trying to bring that to the market right now. And so what stage is this at? Uh, we're, we're in the final testing of our initial product. Uh, so we think we'll actually release to the app stores within a couple of months. Uh, we want to be particularly careful about the security. You know, this is other people are depositing their funds into software that we've written. So we have a certain responsibility to make sure that the software is as secure as possible. Um, so we're putting a lot of energy and a lot of development cycles into just battening down the hatches and making sure everything is in tip top shape before we ship. Why on, why on that particular chain? What are the actual advantages? Sure. So uh, there is a lot of discussion about uh, the differences between Ethereum, for example, and Bitcoin's model of smart contracting. Uh, Ethereum went down the road of introducing a lot of complexity to the system. And what happens as a result of that is the attack surface gets much larger. Uh, the more complex something is, the more likely something somewhere along the line is going to break. Uh, someone's going to make a mistake. Uh, and you see that being played out in the news. Uh, you know, every, it seems like every other day there's another either a smart contract hack or a hack of a centralized exchange or a hack of one of these wrapped token bridges. All of that complexity uh, is really what leads, pushes, you know, sophisticated investors away from systems like Ethereum. Whereas in Bitcoin, with a much more limited set of tools, you have to think a little bit more carefully about the types of systems that you build and the types of contracts that you're deploying. Uh, and so they tend to be a little bit more resilient, a little bit stronger. Uh, you haven't really seen any uh, actual on-chain contract hacks uh, in the Bitcoin ecosystem. Pretty much everything that you have seen is the result of centralization where people are depositing their funds into someone else's keys. But you know, ultimately what we're trying to focus on is bringing that degree of uh, attention to security to the markets, where instead of you know, this, uh, you know, the, the, the current token market, the ICO market, you know, is kind of up and down and you never know when you're going to get rug pulled. Uh, we want to build on something that is a stable foundation. And so ultimately that led us to Bitcoin. And so you're, you say you're going to go live in a, in a couple of months time. So obviously you're working on the product. What else are you working on pre, pre-launch? So a lot of our work right now, uh, aside from research, obviously. So uh, there's a couple of new things that have been activated on Bitcoin in the past few months. Uh, Taproot is of note. Aside from the research tasks and how to make you know, payment channels faster and more efficient, uh, we're, we actually have another, another set of services that we're launching as well, things that are, are related to infrastructure and tooling and application development. We see Portal as a flagship application in a new wave of things built on top of Bitcoin. And when I say built on top of Bitcoin, I mean built directly using Bitcoin as its core asset. You know, we, we see a coming wave of adoption between, between that and then this need for interoperability between the other networks that have kind of built up the existing DeFi ecosystem. Uh, you know, we got to open up the pathways, open up, uh, unblock any uh, challenges in being able to move your capital and move information between chains. Uh, and then I think that's really when the, the, the bull, real bull run begins as we kind of move into an actual proper digital economy. And, and what do you think? it's going to look like in terms of gas fees uh, using uh, Bitcoin. How will that, uh, that affect things? Yeah, so right now uh, on Bitcoin, transaction fees are at an all-time low. And what you pay for in Bitcoin is not for computation. You pay for storage space in the Bitcoin blockchain. So uh, most of what we're able to do is reduce our transaction size down to very, very small. So you would be paying effectively cents uh, if you want to convert it into dollars, whatever the current uh, market rate for Bitcoin block space is. Uh, our transactions should not be significantly larger. In fact, we actually aim for our transactions to be indistinguishable from any other type of transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain. You know, that's enabled by, you know, a combination between, you know, our SegWit use as well as, you know, as we move towards Taproot, uh, which is a recently activated feature. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're really trying to just maintain the, the, the same level of privacy and uh, security that the Bitcoin blockchain has. So it's not going to be significantly more expensive. It should, in fact, be uh, one for one, exactly the same as just a regular Bitcoin transaction today. 
So for those who, who don't know, uh, what explain Taproot? For those, for those watching the video who, who haven't picked up on that yet. Yeah, so Taproot is a new way of uh, creating a spendable Bitcoin or send, uh, creating a Bitcoin address uh, that allows you to encode many different complex spending rules uh, into, into that uh, what's called the Taproot. It's effectively just a Merkle root uh, of the spending conditions. Uh, and the Merkle root is called the Taproot in Bitcoin. Uh, it uses a new scripting, kind of a new scripting language called Tabscript. Uh, it's useful for the new forms of multi-sig with uh, Schnorr signatures. So you can do very large uh, multi-sigs with tens of thousands of members if you so choose. So Taproot, that activated, I believe it was uh, in November of last year. And it really is uh, kind of a, a very big boost to privacy as well because you, uh, not only privacy, but uh, also efficiency of on-chain use. Uh, because you only, number one, you only have, ever have to share the path in the spending tree that was actually executed. So you get to only store, you only have to store a small amount of information on chain. And that also contributes to the privacy aspects because it makes pretty much every transaction appear identical to one another. And you don't necessarily need to see or know the complexities of the spending conditions that went into it. That's, that's great. And so what do you see as the first I get when you normally when you launch your product, you see here's our first user group. Who will be the first user group and the first use case for, for the product you're bringing out? Yeah, so I really think the DGen DeFi DGens are probably going to be the first people to to kind of power in. Um, you know, they're looking for cheaper fees, they're looking for faster transactions. Uh, there's a couple of simple demands there that I think just fundamentally our technology addresses. But I think the, the, we may see more inroads on the institutional slash retail sides because ultimately our software is going to prove to be more secure, more stable. Uh, you know, there's, not, there's not a central point of failure here that can be attacked. There's not a bridge here that, that, we're, that anybody is operating. Uh, we fundamentally just have a different approach to how, how we're doing these swaps. So hopefully uh, we think actually the, you know, the, the long tail retail uh, will will be the next big wave after you know the DeFi DGens discover it, and we're we're also going to offer up you know tons. There's many different yield generating opportunities. You know we're going to offer up the ability to support Lightning as well as uh, some other technologies where you you know offer up your Bitcoin or your assets as a liquidity bond uh, and you stand to gain uh, return based on that. So there will be other opportunities and other smaller communities of people that just maybe want a smaller return or yield on their existing assets. Uh, those will also be welcome communities kind of in the first couple of weeks. So you talked about communities. What are some of those communities that you see uh, doing well? And what are some projects that you uh, uh, you wish to sort of work with? Yeah, I, th I think what we're seeing is kind of a, a, a wave of education. You know, a lot of people kind of dove in in the last year or two, uh, whether it be through NFTs or ICOs all the way back to, you know, 2017. And, you know, a lot of people got burned. A lot of people made a lot of money. And now they're, look, they're having to look at this as it continues to gain in adoption and, and, and realize that it's a serious thing that's here to stay. So I think people are just getting a little bit more sophisticated, learning a little bit more about the tools. I mean, I'm sure every one of us has a friend who, you know, accidentally burned some, some Ethereum, sending it to the wrong address somewhere or lost keys. I mean, the, the stories are endless. Um, but I think education is really ramping up. Um, so I, I mean, I don't have any particular shout outs, um, other than, you know, the Nakamoto Institute, uh, nakamotoinstitute.org is always a fantastic resource, you know, generally on Bitcoin Twitter, uh, there's just tons of stuff out there. Go to LOP, uh, Jameson LOP has tons of great resources out there. Um, and then of course we've got our telegram and our discord, uh, you can find links on uh, portaldefi.com. You know, we're always happy to help people along in their, in their education journey. And then how can, how can people help you? Uh, what, are you what are you looking for as far as from the community to, to help this project forward? Yeah, so the number one thing right now uh, is almost certainly going to be code review and product review. So we've got an upcoming beta test that we'll be announcing to the general public. If you want to get in on that, you can email help at portaldefi.com and just mention you want to get in on the beta. And uh, then it's ultimately just our, our open source repositories, github.com slash fabric labs. Uh, we've got a bunch of different open source repositories that we're building out, trying to build a toolkit for building decentralized applications in the same way that uh, we've built them at Portal. So yeah, just 
code review and code contributions are helpful. Uh, we do also have a upcoming equity sale on Republic, uh, so republic.com. So there is an opportunity for people if people want to invest in the company that all, that opportunity also exists. But that's pretty much it. And if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Sure. You, I'm most easily reached on Twitter at Martindale, M-A-R-T-I-N-D-A-L-E. Um, I'm at Martindale on all social media, including Instagram, GitHub, all the rest. Um, but Twitter is generally the best place to reach me. So, Eric, thank you very much for being on the show. I'm your host, Murray Newlands. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Murray. Thank you.